Hello fellow modelers! In today's video I'm going to show you how to cast the resin parts like a professional. If you are making plastic models, you probably lost or accidentally ruined some parts from a kit or made some scratchable modifications that you wanted to replicate. Therefore I was always fascinated by resin casting. I already showed you some cheap alternative from Oyamuru thermoplastic material and epoxy party, but this time let's make it properly. First I'm going to show you how to make a simple one part mold. It is perfect for flat or not complex shapes. I recently made a conversion set for my model and I decided to duplicate all these plastic parts. I only need to create a spout. It is basically a place where you pure the resin and I recommend making it at least 5 mm thick. I found out good to make it with a similar volume as the original part. I am gluing master to spout with a super glue. It will create a strong bond, but also you can easily separate it without damaging the original part. You can use styrene plastic boards or residual resin spouts from old accessories. I draw basic shapes that you can cast from one uniform mold. This block is easy to cast and you will not have any problem with it. You can also make more complex shapes, however for demolding and better separation you need to cut a mold with a knife. Possible is also cast with hollow cone or jet exhaust, but you can imagine demolding this object from thin neck and it is impossible without destroying the mold. Therefore it is essential to turn the object and make the mold this way. Ok, we have a prepared parts for molds. But first it is essential to create a frame. I use plastic boards because they are easy to glue. You can also use Lego bricks. But there is a one problem. They are hollow and have a small gaps so silicone could flow in. Which is a waste of material. The frame and spout are from styrene. So you can glue and fix position easily with a ordinary glue for plastic. Be sure that you don't have any gaps in the frame. Otherwise silicone could flow out and you do not want this. If you find some gap you can fix it with adhesive poster gum or plasticine. So we have the frame prepared. Now let's make a mold. I cast mostly relatively easy shapes. So I use for my purposes silicone rubber. In this case Lucopran and Super. This one is made in Czech Republic. So probably it isn't available worldwide. So you must search for different brands or local distributors. You will get with a mold silicone two bottles. One is Catalyst, respectively hardener. And in the large bottle is silicone rubber. In my case it is blue, however more often is white, beige or transparent. Do not forget to mix it properly. Some older silicones had settled oil on the top. You could have a problem with a strength and solidification. And do not use electric mixer. You will create a lot of bubbles this way. The consistency of the silicone rubber is almost like a honey. The mixing ratio is 100 to 3. And you can use a digital scale for the silicone because 1 gram is equal to 1 milliliter. And again mix the silicone and hardener properly. The drying time is 3 or 6 hours. It depends on layer thickness. So you have plenty of time. All the parameters of a silicone should be in the technical documentation included with the product. As you can see the silicone contains a large number of bubbles. If you leave it as it is then the final mold would be with the bubbles also. It looks ok from outside. But if you cut the mold then you will see in consistent layer that is less resilient to tension and thus more fragile. So I recommend to remove bubbles with a vacuum chamber. This is the result for example. You can see that all details are nicely replicated. Mold with the bubbles not so much. Here is a test of solid mold without bubbles. The silicone is nicely resilient, flexible and strong in tension. However, if I damage a solid layer with a cut, then it is easy to separate the whole form. Of 
Okay, so how to remove bubbles? You will need a vacuum pump. Nowadays you can buy some cheap from eBay or from your local distributors. Precisely this two-stage oil pump is mainly used for air conditioning maintenance, but it is perfect even for casting. And you will need also a vacuum chamber. I made this one from stainless steel two-layered cooking pot. You can find many videos on YouTube how to make the similar chamber, so I will add my favorite videos into the video description. And do not use any glass or plexiglass boxes. The oil pump is very strong, so it could implode and hurt you. I use for cover 2 cm thick plexiglass. In the video tutorials, they usually made a hole into the plexiglass and inserted a hose, but you will damage the solid layer of this material and probably make some microscopic cracks. Thus, the plexiglass would be weakened and also could implode. In my opinion, it is best to make a hole into the cooking pot and fill gaps with a silicone. Anyway, here you can nicely see the air expansion in practice. The micro bubbles are increasing size and the silicone could easily pour out of the container. So you must repeat the whole process in the small steps a few times to almost an absolute vacuum. I like this step, it looks like some alien fluid. My vacuum pump cannot reach the absolute vacuum, but minus 0.98 megapascals is not bad at all. You can see that silicone is super smooth. I recommend not to pure silicone on the master. This way is possible creating empty spaces and bad molds. So pure silicone nearby master, it will nicely flow into all corners. And again, add the whole mold into vacuum chamber. The drying time is more or less 3 hours, but I rather wait for 12, just to be sure that everything is nicely solid. If you make parts easily removable from mold, then you will prolong service life. So therefore, I am making the side cut, which helps with the safety removing of resin cast. Essential is only fix the shape of rubber bands before casting. Ok, now the casting itself. I tested a few PUR resin casting systems. And so far my favorite is this Graphrom R55. It contains two components, resin and hardener. The advantage is that the mixing ratio is 1 to 1, so it's very straightforward. The resin is white, so I usually add a small amount of a black color to the resin part. You can see the details easily and it looks more like a plastic. I highly recommend using good protection equipment like goggles, gloves and probably a respirator. These chemicals are quite aggressive, so you can burn your skin. Slightly. The processing time of this type of PUR resin is only 2 or 3 minutes, so you must work quickly and have everything prepared. I mix the two components only 10 seconds and then pour them into the molds. After 10 seconds, the resin starts the exothermic reaction and creating heat. I am pouring the resin into prepared molds and again vacuum out the residual bubbles. Also, it is essential to get the resin into all corners. The demolding is possible after 1 hour, but again good practice is to wait a little bit more. I prefer 2 or 3 hours, otherwise you can damage or bend the shape of thin parts. The demolding is my favorite part of the whole process. It is almost like making sand cakes, just a little bit more complex. As you can see, the resin copy is perfectly accurate and without bubbles. It is primarily good if you have a resin 3D printer. The photosensitive resin is expensive, so you can make a mold and create an accurate copy from cheaper casting resin.
I promised you that I would show you how to make a molds for more complex shapes with the holes, like with wheels. I need to create two part mold. I create the same frame, but I will fill bottom with a multicolored clay plasticine, because I will need to pure silicone in two layers. Maybe you do not understand my drawings, but do not worry, it is easy. So make a consistent layer from a clay and then push parts in two. The holes should be half covered or at least partially filled with a clay. You do not need to use glue, because the clay will fix parts position and do not place plastic parts near to the frame or to each other. I prefer at least one centimeter to all directions. And finish frame as you are used to. Good practice is to add guide pins into the clay. They will help with a perfect mold fitting. Now I am puring the first layer of a silicone. Do not forget to remove bubbles again. You have more possibilities of materials and chemicals, but basically good is silicone rubber for easy small objects with soft details. The mold is harder, less flexible, dimensionally stable, so good for precise resin copy. The second alternative is condensing silicone. This material is more flexible, stronger in tension, but less dimensionally stable and has a larger viscosity. It is perfect for complex shapes with a lot of protrusions or folds, therefore is more often used than silicone rubber. I am removing clay after another 12 hours, but the plastic wheels need to stay at the position. Do not move with them. Unfortunately, the clay stays in the center of the wheels, so I must gently remove all of it. It is mostly easier than in this case. I removed protrusions and made a new frame for the second layer. You cannot cast silicone on silicone, because it will stick to each other and it will be impossible to separate the layers. So essential is to penetrate the bottom layer with a separator. I use for this mold a water-based separator, but I think better is paraffin separator, because the water base has a problem with vertical surfaces, like guide pins. So it only remains to pure the second layer and remove bubbles again. I told you the water-based separator is not the best. As you can see, the pin stuck in the top layer. In this case, it is not a big problem, priority is wheels. Maybe you noticed that I don't have a spout this time, but it is only temporary because you can create a new one with a sharp blade. I am making it from the side where are no details and will be easy to remove spout safety. I fix the position of two molds of rubber bands. This process you already know, I am puring resin and then wait a few hours. Ok, this is the result. If you have a super clean surface, then the result looks like this. It is precise copy of the plastic original, so it has all template errors. You always must spend extra time with the perfect preparation of the master part if you want a flawless result. The thin resin membrane is a layer from the separator. However, it is not again big problem because you can easily remove it with acetone.
OK, it only remains to remove the spout, and the wheel is finished. I have some molds one year old and after 30 casting cycles. The rubber silicone is still stable and the size is identical. So you don't need to worry that it is only for short use and then you would have to throw it away. I primarily wanted to learn this technique because I'm always fascinated by trying something new and also it opened doors for new possibilities, primarily for some scratchable models or customizations. I hope you found this tutorial just a little bit useful. So that is all. Thank you for watching, see you next time and happy casting!